What's up, party people? What's this new e-bike that's generating a lot of hype? Was funded over a million dollars in an Indiegogo campaign and has the aesthetics to give Philip K. Dick a cyberpunk wet dream. We're talking about Zion Bike and their model, the Cyber X. And I got to visit the company and test ride the prototype. Let's get into it. Welcome back, friends. I hope everyone is doing well and being safe. So this video has been in the works for a little while. I decided to wait to release it um, for more information to come out about the CyberX instead of releasing it last month. So today, we're going to talk about Zion. And no, I don't mean the last human civilization from the film The Matrix. Zion Bike is a new e-bike company based in San Diego. And there's been a lot of buzz about their bike, the CyberX. And I got to say, they're doing a hell of a job marketing it. The ads are all over the social media platforms, and they've got visuals like this. So I set out to visit the company in San Diego and see what the company and the operations looked like and to make sure that they even existed. While I was there, I got to test ride the CyberX prototype. Now this is not a review video of the final product. There is no production model yet. With the CyberX currently in development and Zion working towards full production, information about the bike is constantly evolving. So it's likely that some of what I'm about to tell you will become outdated in the near future. And there's also a little bit of speculation about the performance specs of the motor, uh, as this info is not published by the manufacturer. Alas, I'm gonna give you a good old fashioned T-Rowan breakdown on what the CyberX will look and feel like based on the specs and information that we have. And you will get to see what riding the prototype was like. All right, let's talk about a company overview here. Let's talk about how Zion came to be. Zion Bikes was founded by CEO Ali Horas, who made a name for himself in the pedicab advertising business. He's a really nice guy, he's down to earth, very approachable. Did tell him that I was gonna make a video about the bike and he asked me if I was going to say anything negative. I, I told him that I would be honest. Other key employees include creative director Samuel Delgado and lead engineer Umat Alan. So let's backpedal here a little bit. So after the pedicab business took a hit due to COVID, they decided to found Zion Bike and get into the e-bike business. Zion started an Indiegogo campaign for the CyberX in April 2021. They raised just over a million dollars. An early bird pricing for the CyberX was $3,699. They have since received their funds from the campaign and are gearing up for production. They have a relationship with Accelerated Systems Inc, or ASI, who is supplying the motor controller and produces the ever-popular BAC controller. And another company called Lightning Rods, who is supplying the motor for the CyberX. Zion has a building in downtown San Diego which houses all of their operations, and where they plan to produce all of these bikes. Most, if not all of the bikes, have been sold at cost to get the business off the ground and prove the concept. So what about the bike? Enter the CyberX. This electric bike looks like it would be ridden by the main protagonist in a Blade Runner type universe where everyone goes cosmic bowling. I mean, it does look pretty dystopian, right? The aesthetics evoke feelings of nostalgia for that laser tag pizza party that you had at the World of Fun in fifth grade, but with a neo noiristic twist. Something a little bit darker. Nah, man, but this bike is cyberpunk as hell. And you probably either love the look of it or hate it. I just want to go ahead and apologize for the sounds of fireworks going off. If you hear them, Los Angeles loves their fireworks. And no, it's not the 4th of July. We're pre-gaming days ahead. We start early out here. You know what else people around here really love? Fart cannon exhaust. Yeah, those cheap AutoZone muffler kits that just make your car sound like a fart cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I lived in an insulated building and not a cardboard box on the side of the freeway. Okay, we were talking about the design, the aesthetics of the CyberX, right? And we're going to talk more about customization of that, but leave a comment. Let me know, what do you guys think of this bike? Do you like the way it looks? Do you hate the way that it looks? What would you do different? What do you think, what would you change? So the reason we were calling this an electric bike would be the fact that it has, you guessed it, pedals. Now for some, this is a no-brainer, but in case you missed it, uh, this is classified as an e-bike. It offers a 50 mile an hour top speed and 5,000 watts of power in race mode. The bike will also feature a pedal assist system, which simply put, allows you to get exercise at low speeds. So the bike will have a street mode, which limits the power output to 750 watts and limits the top speed to 28 miles per hour for legal reasons. And then you've got race mode, which gives you a 50 mile an hour top speed and five kilowatts of power for off-road use only, right? 
The bike is shown with off-road tires, which implies that it doubles as the commuting man's electric dirt bike, with the unique aesthetic customization and styling that you won't get with a Suron. But the real reason that it has knobbies is not because they intended for it to be used mostly for off-roading, but primarily because of how difficult the worldwide parts shortage has made it to get all-terrain or street tires. Zion is working on sourcing other types of tires, and they're giving the customer the choice between a street tire or an off-road tire, and these will include a 17-inch front wheel and 16-inch rear wheel. The suspension situation is inverted forks with a rear mono shock. Don't expect name brand suspension parts. Uh, these will likely be decent generic grade parts. One thing I will say is that the rear suspension looks a little bit odd. Shock sits pretty far forward on the swing arm and is at an angle relative to the chassis. Uh, it just looks like it's not ideal for rideability. But hey, what do I know? All I know is F equals KX. That's as far as I go with springs. Maybe someone out there that uh, designs suspension or has some insight can chime in on this. So the bike has motorcycle hydraulic disc brakes, front and rear, which is great. And apparently the bike weighs approximately 150 pounds. The carrying capacity of the bike is said to be 500 pounds, and there's a seat long enough to fit two people on it, maybe three if you want. There are also four different frame sizes, from small to X large. I believe that they are adjusting the bike to fit a range of people by manipulating the suspension of the bike to set the ride height. The frame is made of 4130 chromoly steel, um, which is great because pound for pound it's stronger than most steel and it's used for everything from bicycle frames to fuselage to roll cages. The bike has a headlight, uh, the stock one is round and there is an option for a square headlight. There is also an option to add fenders and the bike includes an LCD display and a Bluetooth speaker as well. But let's talk about the myriad of aesthetic. <laughs> myriad, what a nerd. There is no shortage of aesthetic customization options. You get to choose the frame color and you can customize the side panel. So you can upload your own design, a design of your choosing and have them laser cut it into the side panel. So it looks like there is a vinyl option, which I'm assuming is like a vinyl wrap that is placed on the side panel. I'm not 100% sure if this one has LEDs behind it or not. And then you can choose to have your own custom design placed on mirror acrylic with LEDs behind it. This is what the mirror acrylic looks like on the prototype bike. It's like a blue mirror acrylic. And I'm guessing if you wanted the stock design as well, there's nothing stopping you from getting that. So it's plenty of options to go around. I've also heard that there will be an option for LED wheel lights. So if you want lights in your wheel, Okay, so let's move on and talk about the battery for this bike. Now the battery is rated at 72 volts and is of the NMC type or nickel manganese cobalt oxide type of battery. This probably means that the pack is made up of some kind of run of the mill cylindrical cell. I actually don't have much information on the battery. I'm not sure what type of cells are used inside. I just know that it's essentially a black hard case with handles. This battery will be rated 100 amps of peak output current and this will be regulated by the BMS. I'm willing to bet that bypassing the BMS could get you more current out of this pack. There are several capacity options that are offered for this bike. So you can get a 32 amp hour battery, 37 amp hour battery, 42 amp hour battery, or 50 amp hour battery, which equates to 2.3 kilowatt hours, 2.6 kilowatt hours, 3 kilowatt hours, and 3.6 kilowatt hours. So the 50 amp hour battery pack weighs about 50 pounds. And you can see the pricing here for the upgraded battery packs, right, from the stock one. So if you want the biggest battery pack, you're gonna have to pay an additional $400. And the bike comes with a five amp charger stock, but you can upgrade to a 10 amp or 15 amp charger. Depending on your battery, the 15 amp charger could charge it from empty to 80% in just over two hours, or with the biggest battery, about three and a half hours. And let's talk about the electric motor. Now the Cyber X is using a lightning rods big block motor. Lightning Rods is an American motor manufacturer. Uh, they're probably not making their motors here. They're probably still made in China, but they're based in America. And they're pretty well known in the e-bike world for making mid-drive motor kits. I talked to the owner of Lightning Rods, Michael, and apparently its motor's never been dynoed. They don't have any official specs for power and torque output. There are a few specs on the website that you'll see. So the conservative peak power rating for this motor from the manufacturer is 10 kilowatts. But Michael did tell me that this motor has seen 13.5 kilowatt plus bursts and that there were no signs that it was getting hot or stressed out. What is the limit of the lightning rods big block motor? I'm not really sure. I'm sure someone out there knows. There's a lot of great info on this motor on the forum Endless Sphere if you wanna check out more. That brings us to the motor controller. Let's talk about the BAC controller situation. The bike comes with the BAC 2000 controller stock, which is good for up to 14.5 kilowatts or 200 amps DC, 141 amps RMS. Even though 
Your battery is limited to 100 amps. The motor controller is capable of multiplying current through something called the buck stage of the motor controller. To simplify this, let's take the theoretical max power of the battery, which is 72 volts times 100 amps, or 7.2 kilowatts. And let's say the BAC4000 multiplies our battery current and is outputting 300 phase amps at some instant in time. Let's start with what we know. We know that power output has to equal power input minus any losses that occur, okay? You're not multiplying power here. You're not getting more power out of the power that you put in, okay? If you're able to multiply power like that, you're probably working in a lab somewhere in a secret location or some undetermined black budget project or you're dead. So using the equation for three phase power, right on the motor side, we're gonna set that equal to our battery power, which is 7.2 kilowatts, all right? We're not accounting for any efficiency losses here. Uh, and we can rearrange and substitute our phase current in and use a power factor of something like 0.9. Don't worry about power factor, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's pretty conservative. And that gives us a line to line voltage of 15.4 volts. Since the lightning rods motor is rated at 62 RPM per volt, this voltage gives us around 955 motor RPM, which at the wheel is approximately 156 RPM, which corresponds to a speed of 10 miles per hour. So what's the point? What gives? Since our input power is fixed, the motor controller can vary current to give more torque in the low end, but as your speed and voltage increases, this current will also decrease. Long story short, the BAC4000 will give you more torque or acceleration in the low end than the BAC2000, but you still won't be able to take advantage of the full power rating of the controller, which is around 31 kilowatts of power. And the BAC8000 is just total overkill for this application. Hell, you could put a Tesla Model 3 controller on there if you really want, but the battery will still be the limiting factor. And then second to that, the motor will also be a limiting factor in how much power it can take. If you really wanna push the big block motor, take it to its full potential, uh, you're gonna need an upgraded battery pack, a custom battery pack with improved current output from the stock battery. So expect to spend another two to 4K on that battery if you're interested. Okay, so let's talk about the drivetrain. So the bike is utilizing a Gates carbon drive belt system for the pedals and for the motor. Gates is a leader in the belt drive biz. Not much to say here except it's gonna be a really smooth experience and it'll be great for street use and for off-road use. Now, I've always been a little bit leery about belts and mud, right? Or wet off-road conditions where foreign debris can get lodged in between, but we're gonna find out how well that works. All right, performance, performance, performance. Let's talk about performance. Let's talk about performance. Power. So the power of the bike is going to be limited in software to five kilowatts, but it's obvious that the motor can produce almost three times this, no sweat. Okay, for motor torque, I don't have, I don't have any values, uh, but I did run some calculations that estimate about 34 Newton meters of torque at the motor with the BAC 2000 and 72 Newton meters of torque with the BAC 4000, which if the gear ratio is about six, which I estimated, that means 207 Newton meters of torque at the wheel with the BAC 2000 and 440 Newton meters of torque at the wheel with the BAC 4000. That's pretty nutty. Remember, these are all just theoretical numbers based on calculations that I ran. And this bike will also be limited to a top speed of 50 miles an hour. And I have no doubt that this bike can achieve that. Um, I had the prototype up to just above 40 mile an hour, but I kept running out of room on the short San Diego streets. So we know without a doubt that unlocking more power from this bike is possible, but to tune the BAC controller, you'll need to go in through the back door. Uh, literally, you will need ASI's backdoor app, which can only be used with people that have an ASI OEM account. So someone's gonna need to volunteer and uh, score that OEM account because I doubt Zion's gonna be tuning everybody's bike for them. So it's gonna be up to, to you hackers to take things into your own hands. And how about the range? The purported range of the CyberX is 100 miles. But obviously that means riding at a very low speed with a combination of pedaling. Based on our standard physics model of the bike, which is the same model we've used in previous videos, if you haven't seen those, Check them out right here, where I go through calculations and model motorcycles and e-bikes using physics. Based on this model and the range of different battery, con <laughs> range, I shouldn't use that word here. The different types of battery configurations, we get the following results. 32, <laughs> if you were cruising at a high speed continuously, okay, 50 mile an hour, just, just gunning it, cruising, you could expect anywhere from 20 to 35 miles of range. Um, from the lowest battery capacity to the highest battery capacity option. So this is obviously an extreme, right? You're cruising at a max speed 
It's an extreme circumstance. Now, regular old city riding will likely net you 45 to 75 miles of range, depending on which battery pack you choose, okay? That's from the lowest capacity to the highest capacity option. Again, this is highly theoretical, okay? This is just, when you crunch the numbers, this is, this is what you get. Okay, so on the app development front, it was announced that there will be an app available for the CyberX. Um, to allow you to probably change settings on the fly. I don't have any details, but it was announced that there would be an app. Production, what's going on? What's happening? So it was stated that a batch of controllers should be arriving sometime in mid to late June and batteries would be arriving in July. All of the orders for parts have been placed by Zion. Now they're just playing the waiting game. Okay, as factories and businesses worldwide are starting to open up and return back to normal, they're waiting for all of their parts. And you guys that have placed orders for the CyberX, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, you're gonna have to be patient, okay? This is a startup. They're gonna have to produce hundreds of bikes from their outfit in San Diego, which is not an easy feat. I know, I know, I know you want minute by minute updates, but just keep in mind, you're not, you're probably not gonna get that, okay? They won't always have all of the answers immediately. They're gonna have to figure shit out. That's what you backed. You backed a startup that is going to learn the ropes of how to produce an e-bike by manufacturing the CyberX. And their stated goal is to build 500 bikes right off the bat. Um, I'm sure they're gonna end up building more than that. And I thought about comparing this bike to other bikes in this video and, you know, getting into a pissing contest with, you know, other companies and what they offer, but I, I don't wanna do that here. Uh, I wanna give you an unadulterated breakdown of a single product. Uh, so we can talk about that in the comments section if you like. If you wanna, you know, bring up other bikes and how much they cost versus this bike, the power they, they put out, by all means, you know, bring it up in the comments section below. Testing. As you know, I got to ride the prototype in San Diego. Uh, it was the first prototype. And for a prototype, I gotta say it was pretty well put together. The battery was actually limited to 40 amps. So I have not felt anything close to what the production version will feel like, uh, but it still had plenty of pep. The bike does feel a little bit heavy, uh, but it's definitely sturdy. The knobby tires did not feel great on pavement as expected. If Zion improves on the prototype, as I'm sure they will, um, then the production model is gonna be a fun bike. I only had 15 minutes to ride the bike that day and I was on San Diego city streets, but still that was better than nothing. I would love, 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 love to get a production model and take it out to the desert, really beat on it, you know, ride around the LA city streets with it, truly stress test it. Ali, if you're watching, please let me borrow a CyberX for a weekend and do some stress testing. I'll drive down to San Diego and pick it up. All right, and we've made it to the conclusions section. Conclusions on my research of the CyberX. The bike will not be this cheap in the future, okay? Take advantage of the pricing now. If aesthetic customization is important to you, then the CyberX is probably your bike. The level of customization that they're offering for this bike is wonderful, okay? Maybe even unparalleled, but I feel like that's going to inevitably lead to longer production times, which will translate to longer wait times for the customer. Zion has absolutely nailed their aesthetics and marketing, all right? They've done a fantastic job. My hat is off to them. Can they deliver in time to keep backers happy? This is gonna be the challenge, and I'm optimistic. I think that they can. The initial base pricing is hard for a lot of people to beat um, based on what you're getting, but you can be sure that the price will probably go up in the future, and as you add upgrades, you're gonna see that you know price climb up over you know, $5,000. And last but not least, I just wanna say, um, you know, it's not easy to just start a company and jump into the electric vehicle space. So I'm really rooting for them as a company uh, and for Ali, I hope they are successful and I hope everything goes well. All right, guys, that's gonna do it. If you enjoyed the content, please smash that like button. Go ahead and leave a comment, leave some feedback. Let's talk. What did you like? What don't you like? Have you ordered a CyberX? Are you waiting on one? Maybe we can convince Ali together to let me borrow a CyberX for a weekend. I'd be sure to document the whole process and gather some good data as well. Guys, if you enjoyed what you saw today, please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got new videos coming all the time. Follow me on Instagram at troan underscore emoto, where I build bikes, I break things, and you know I've got a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you won't find on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and be safe out there.